best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. And, you know, there's a number of people who've done videos about the kind of relative intelligence of Marvel Comics. And, and years and years, and DC Comics are videos. But Marvel seems particularly adept at this. And my theory there is that the Marvel quip type humor that uh, Joss Whedon kind of really got rolling and it became a real standard of the Marvel Universe. It's it's now baked into everything. Nothing is that serious uh, in what they do. And the guy, and this goes back a long time, and I know these are one of the things that everybody uses to say it's a hate channel and everything else, but Nurkish used to do these roasts, and he was incredible at uh, with the voices and the humor, just biting angry humor around these stupider moments in comics. He was wonderful. Lots of people have done it since, and it's not as good, you know. Um, you know, Zach will do voices uh, from time to time about Yumsies and things like that. But it's it's not Nur Nurkish was a different level of being able to perfectly encapsulate this, you know, quote humor that would go on in these books. And uh, and and so you've seen that in there. They're fun to roast, and people talk about them, and and uh, you know, you shake your head and all the rest. Uh, but I, I, I'm taking somewhat of a different angle to the whole thing which which is more along the lines of why and what got me thinking about this and this is a true story a 100 percent true story uh, and uh, so you know my daughters who you've heard on my channel from time to time you know uh, old, you know oldest is 12 youngest is nine and uh, my younger one in particular has been doing more videos she's very enamored with the idea of being youtube famous uh, i don't have the heart to tell her that you know the i am not famous um and, you know, dad with his, I don't know, me, 30,000 subs. I, I, I don't know what I'm at these days, but uh, it's nothing. It's, this isn't YouTube famous. You know, it's, it's not, you know, she goes, my daughter would be like, oh, my, my dad's a big YouTube celebrity, like, uh, like Ozzy Man and, uh, you know, Uncle Roger and uh, the Dude Perfect guys. And I'm like, okay, well, one of those, one of those four doesn't belong with the other four. <laughs> That's not even the same, same universe. Uh, of those other guys um and you know my daughters love pitch meeting and ryan george and they love uh you know uncle ryan uh you know and who's a you know a great guy um and they they love that they love hearing from they'll talk to him and it is but it is um what what kills me a little bit is this is a true story we're in target and there's a brand new Dogman book and i've been traveling around so i don't know when this dropped but i think fairly recently the new dog man book dropped and both my girls have been, you know, we're, we're big fans of Dogman. And I, you know, they're, they're like, oh, we got to buy that. We got to buy that. And I'm like, are you sure? Are you, are, you, are you still interested? I haven't really noticed, you know, my, my older daughter's trending toward Maze Runner. And that's what she's really into, those books and Demon Slayer. And, you know, on the comic side, I go, Dogman. I, I don't know you're still into Dogman. My younger daughter's really into uh, the Adventures of Babysitting books and the Rain and Tellermeyer books. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 we're not too old for it. We're not too old for it. And and so they grab it. And then my younger daughter, who's nine, uh, as we're walking out, because I, I, you know, I'm dad and I've traveled a lot. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's the guilt dad. So I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever you want. Let's just drop that cash. Um, I, as we're walking out, my younger daughter goes, you should review more dog, man. It's way more grown up than those comics you normally talk about. And I go, no, no, it's, I go, ha ha, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, but, uh, it's, it's, I'm like, no, 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 they're, they're more grown up. They're more grown up. And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, the various kind of, you know, uh, what, whatever the, the various, you know, Tiki bar orgy era of the X-Men. Um, but, uh, you know, she's like, no, no, that, that, you know, the comic we were looking at the other day, and it was the women of Marvel comic. Um, and she's like, Dog Man is way more grown up than that. And it, it's not, of course. I mean, if you look at Dog Man, it's, you know, it's the humor level is much lower, but it is more uh, straightforward. The humor has a, a clear beginning, middle, and end. It, it grows, it builds. It, it's, it, I mean, there's a, there's a clear story. Dav Pilkey is an excellent storyteller. No doubt about that. You're going to co compare and contrast him with you know, Charlie Jane Andrews and somebody that they paid you know, if $45, you know, a, a page for, it's not the same. It's not even remotely the same. The humor is just not 
anywhere close to the level of, of writing quality. But as you know, later in the day, I'm looking at the Women of Marvel book, and it is, uh, you know, I'm reading that stuff, and I know the jokes you've probably heard on the videos, but no joke, in all seriousness, it, it's nonsensical. It it makes no sense, and really, I, I mean, I I picked up and I did. I couldn't. Uh, I didn't know that you know, the girls' sports went to bed with Dogman to to read it until they fell asleep. So I, I reached for another book that was. I'm on one of their shelves of just Captain Underpants. Again, another dab pilky. And it's like Captain Underpants, uh, you know, has a story, flashbacks, other things. Again, it's very juvenile kind of script of what's going on, but the story flows like like a story. You know, like like there there's some foreshadowing, then there's um some, you know, the protagonist doing this, there's and it it actually has you know, a, a interesting flow of the kids are trying to do something bad and then they get in trouble and then they, they, you know, try and double down to make things better, but it makes things worse. And then it makes much worse. Now they've got multiple different plates splinting and, you know, they've got to try and figure out what to do. And it's all told, of course, to a kid perspective. It, it very much aligns with the audience that you think is probably reading Captain Underpants. But by contrast, you pick up a lot of the, you know, then I'm picking up Marvel, but you pick up a lot of the comics that adopt this style. And the story makes effing no sense at all. I think my daughters may watch this video, so I'm going to try and limit the language here. I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> Mrs. Perch doesn't always like them to watch my channel because I curse like a drunken sailor. Uh, but, you know, and, and more power to her. She's right, of course. But, but uh, I'm reading this, the, these comics, and it, it, there's just a, such a stark difference now between the comics that are, you know, try, you know, the, the writer is kind of valiantly struggling to, to tell a story, you know, and this is why I, I finally get it a little bit. I've not been the biggest fan of Jed McKay's Moon Knight. I don't hate it. I just don't, I don't see what the big deal is. And then, but, but reading several of these, you know, books, E-Viewing's uh, Photon, which features a character I love, uh, with Monica Rambeau, uh, the one in a Marvel book, uh, some of these other titles, I got an early look at a Marvel Infinity uh, comic uh, that I think is going to get published here in a month or so. That is just I like it's 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 numbing. It somehow is you know more adult themes than Dogman, but written for a dumber audience and written at, you know not just written for a dumber audience because you, you don't really feel like the writer is is uh, cleverly you know writing to you know, I, an audience, you feel like the writer is, you know, out of their mind. You, you you could only assume that, you know, whoever wrote this did a crap ton of blow or shrooms or, or you know, what or Adderall. I'd have no idea what was going on, but there's no way these stories were not written without heavy distraction plus medication. These are the comics that get read or get, we guess, sorry, get read, get written by somebody who is sitting on the couch has been on Twitter all day, like literally all day, hasn't written a single page, and is now coming up on a deadline. It's like, crap, uh, I've had a decent amount of, uh, you know, of, of, of wine coolers, and, uh, you know, <laughs> by the way, how, how in the hell, you know, White Claw, I'm sorry, uh, you know, new generation, you know, White Claw is, uh, is your, you know, Gen X is Zima. You're drinking garbage. But anyway, you know, has been drinking White Claw and, and watching their way through, I can only assume, you know, their fourth time through Riverdale. And, and this is the comic that gets vomited out at 11.45 at night. Do you notice that a lot of the writers who write some of the absolute worst crap, uh, they get very quiet on Twitter around 9.30 local time, whatever their local time is, about 9.30 p.m. till about 2, and then there's another little spike up. I'm not, this is, by the way, I'm not joking about this. You can notice. There's this, like, three-hour, like, dead space in the writing, in, in their, their social media activity, and then they resurface. What are they doing for those three hours? Well, you know, you might think they've been eating, but, you know, let's let's be honest. When you're eating alone, you can keep tweeting. But, these people have to be, that has to be the writing time. That has to be the shit, you know, I'm going to be super behind if I don't, 
if I don't get onto uh, writing this uh, writing this comic. And so you know, here goes, and and then it's just kind of the collection of dumb humor. Like I'd really like to make a joke about how Trump's going to be an handcuffs because that's what I've been talking about half the day. And I, I can't do that. And okay, they're gonna they won't my editor won't let me write comics. Gabe is an eight group in a comic, so can't really do anything like that. There's a really funny meme of a cat that vomited on a dog. Can I I can include that somehow? I'll put that in there. And I don't know. Let's uh, let's watch some TV. I'm gonna watch some TV and got a drink. And uh, this is what's going to come out the other end. You know, stories with Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan uh, eating snow cones. Like that, like that. How? How? I guarantee you, if you could go over and like FBI raid and go into these people's houses, apartments, whatever, basements, and you, uh, you, you were able to look at their Netflix history and browser history, you would find all the cookie crumbs for some of these dumbass stories that have been written because because they're they're just they they feel like chat GPT plus alcohol plus you know Netflix that's that's what you've got and they're and so it comes down to this this painful horrifying you know feeling or this this comment from my daughter which is Dogman is a more grown up comic than Marvel. And then if you want to go a little bit farther with all this, you get to, hang on, some of these books are meant to be a celebration of, you know, feminists and uh, femi- and and women's rights. You know, the idea behind a, a Women of Marvel book is, is intended to be, hey, you know, it's a, typically a kind of male-dominated industry. There's a lot more men who are writing comics and, and in this business, historically, there's a lot of the creators, but you know, women who, you know, were kind of editors and, and semi ignored for a period of time. Um, they, you know, start writing comics and you get some really cool, you get the Mars Thomases in there, you get the Louis Simonsons, the Anacentes, the, you know, the people you've heard of Karen Berger, uh, people in comics with some control. And, uh, and, and so you, you get these people who start to make some really big waves. And now here we are 40 years later, and it's time to celebrate, you know, all those achievements. And that's, that's that's a decent thing to celebrate. Cool, you know? But we're going to celebrate it by dog shit, just nonsense stories that make Dogman look like stellar writing. Again, you know, you're, you're going to be in the comments. It's going to be funny. It's kind of roast like, ah, you know, look at Purge put, you know, it, call Dan Slot Bat some more too. It's like, yeah, you know, I look, I, I, I I don't want to keep rolling Dan Slot up the hill. That's very exhausting. Um, oh, sorry, I did it again. Anyway, I, but my my point is, you know, you might think this is just a joke, but and I'm, I'm actually I'm not joking in terms of actual writing quality, writing ability. And and granted, it's not entirely fair. Dan Dab Pilkey is a multi millionaire, master of his craft, really good at what he does. I mean, you can be fooled by the fact that he's got kids' books. But he's a he's a master at what he does. He's really, really good at it. He clearly guy's very wealthy, very successful, has lots of great titles out. Pilkey is uh, is a big deal. So, you know, it's it's like taking like a an absolute champion, you know, in one field and saying, let's let's line him up against whatever, you know, uh, yes, whatever Eve Ewing did this week. That's not a fair comparison. Granted, one person's way more successful than the other. Um, uh, but, but the qual the, the writing difference is extremely noticeable. So here's my challenge for you. If you're one of the people who've been watching these videos and, uh, not mine, but others, and you've been kind of, you, you chuckle away at, you know, whatever dumb nonsensical nonsense the Marvel anthology is doing, you know, a lot of, a lot of you like to do that. That's fine. I want you next time you're in Walmart or Target or the grocery store. Or all of the many, 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 many places that Dogman is sold. There's a new book out right now. It's got some literary twist. It's like Dogman, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, or I, something like that. Anyway, um, pick it up. And it's it's a quick read because of how it's structured. The art is extremely crude. You know, it's not Jim Lee in there. But pick it up and just, just thumb through it. Like, read a couple chapters. Or, failing that, you know, a Captain Underpants, Catman, whatever it happens to be. And just notice for yourself how the story flows, how things come up, and 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 compare and contrast. Or 
you're another YouTube channel, one more popular of mine, and, and you look at these issues from time to time, I, I, I dare you. So to Zach, I dare you. Take a look at Dogman. Pick it up, read it. Go through it. Because this is a kid's book that somehow has better structure, better literary. So, and, and by the way, if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, because I've, I've read, I've, you know, I, I don't as much as I used to, but I used to read books to my daughters all the time. Uh, fairly recently, about six months ago, I was reading one of the Adventures in Babysitter's uh, Club. Adventures in Babysitter's Club. No, just the Babysitter's Club. I'm mixing it up with an 80s movie. Yeah. Babysitter Club books to my daughter. And and the, it, it it's a it's a better it's just the story the structure all those the fundamentals are professional it, it's it's uh it's it's weird it's very weird to me how these books are so much better anyway uh take a look for yourself see what you think maybe i'm exaggerating maybe i'm just in a bad mood you can tell me in the comments below like and subscribe and thanks for listening